Hello, 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 hello. This is your pastor, Bishop R.C. Blakes, coming to you again. I need you to make certain that you invite some others to come in and to be a part of this time in the Word today. We have a great one for Bible study today. I think this one is going to uh, pique your interest. You know, so many times uh, I try to come up with conversations and studies, and sometimes you all are interested, sometimes you're not. Well, I believe this one is going to pique the interest of a lot of you. We're talking today, how did I actually title this? We're talking today um, about purpose, identifying your unique, uh, here it is, identifying your unique and authentic individual purpose. Let's just put it that way. Identifying your authentic individual purpose. So we're talking today about purpose. And, you know, it's a subject that everybody wants to talk about. It's because the longing of the human soul is to be of uh, utility, to be of value, to be of worth, to... Um, have a reason for being and to have one's life make a difference. You know, now some of us who are um, who are less evolved, less mature, childish, we think that the whole of life is to just live to make money, to make a name, and to have power. That's an empty existence. That's not even living. That's just an empty existence. People that are really, that have a clue of any kind are people that are searching for their why. Why am I here? You know, why did the creator uh, make me? What is my unique um, gifting What's the mark that God wants to leave on the earth because of me, you know? And so the, the idea of purpose is, um, is universal. People all around the world want to know about how can I find my purpose. Now, I personally believe that um, purpose is discerned, um, more so than, than discovered, I think that purpose is developed more so than discovered. And, I, and I've used that phraseology as well, you know, discovering your purpose. All of us have. But when you think deeper about it and when you understand the intricacies of purpose, you also begin to understand that Purpose is, it's, it's not like something that all of a sudden in a moment you have this revelation and wow, that's my purpose. No, it's like it, it's un, it unfolds and it builds, you know, one thing on top of another. And then it's at a certain point that you come to where you can plug all of the pieces together. It's almost like when you get to that point in a jigsaw puzzle where you, you have so many pieces together that now the image is starting to take shape. Well, so it is with your purpose. There are certain things you got to just, as we're going to talk about today, you got to just do and you got to just by faith, you got to do it and you got to be diligent in it. And then as you continue to do these things that you know are right to do, it's like there's a certain point that you come to where the imagery of the puzzle begins to take shape for you. And so um, in life, first thing I want to say to you is that in life, um, there is human purpose. Human purpose 
versus individual purpose or unique authentic purpose. Now, what is human purpose? Human purpose is that which is understood to be the purposes of God for human beings. We are all here, you know, what is my purpose? Well, if you're a Christian, we, one, of, one of the understood purposes of a Christian is reconciliation. You know, you shouldn't be causing divisions and strife. You should be reconciling people. You shouldn't be, you know, ostracizing people. Um, giving, you know, being a giver, not a taker. That's a, that's a hum, that's a universal human purpose. To work for your own food is a human purpose. To worship the Almighty God is a human purpose. To walk justly with all men, to be at peace with all men, is a human purpose. This is something that is purposeful for human beings across the board. And may I say this to you, a lot of times we cannot realize the, we can't focus, should I say, the unique individual purpose that God has for us specifically because we have flunked so severely in the human purposes. If you don't love people, if you don't want to work for your own food, if, if you're a divider, not a reconciler, you know, you know what I mean? And if you, if you don't worship God, if, if you're dishonest and, and you are, you know, a cheat, why would God give you more? See, the, the realization of your individual unique purpose is an indication that God can trust you. And sometimes we don't get to that level in God because there are so many things that are just understood as human purpose that we ignore and we do not fulfill. And so for some of you, it's futile for you to cry out, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? When you, when you read the book and you don't do what the book says as it relates to humanity at large, when God is not your priority, how can you ask God to reveal some unique specific purpose of yours when you've not prioritized God. You can go everywhere but the house of God. You can you can waste money on a Beyonce concert or a Saints football game. You know, I mean, I I you know, I won't call it a waste. If that's your thing, that's your thing. But my point is how many of us have all of these things that we throw money at, but when it comes down to tithing or sowing seed into the kingdom of God, we, we fall back, and then we want God to reveal some unique gifting that would make us special when all of these human purposes are being ignored by us. So um, I thought that was necessary to, to highlight. Now let's get some definition of authentic individual purpose. It is often described as the alignment between ones. Here it is. Now listen to this very, very, very carefully. Authentic individual purpose is often described as the alignment between one's deepest passions, talents, and values with actions that contribute positively to oneself and to others. From a theological perspective, this purpose is often seen as a divine calling or a way to fulfill God's plan for one's life specifically. It involves recognizing and utilizing the, the unique gifts and talents bestowed upon us to serve a greater good. That's that's a definition of authentic individual purpose. Now, uh, let me see if I can. I'm, I'm looking in um, 
the American Dictionary of the English uh, Language, Noah Webster, 1828. I love this dictionary. Oh, let's see what his de definition of purpose is. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, purpose. We believe the supreme being created intelligent beings for some benevolent and glorious purpose. And if so, how glorious and benevolent must be his purpose in the plan of redemption. He's created us for some benevolent and glorious purpose. Now, there's a whole list of definitions, but I love this, this, this dictionary because it comes from the perspective of God's word being the authority. That's why I love this dictionary. It's from 1828. He says, we believe the supreme being created intelligent beings for some benevolent and glorious purpose. In other words, your purpose is going to be a gift to humanity as well as a glorification of the Almighty. Any so-called purpose that only benefits you is a vain ambition. It is not a divine purpose that came from God. Now, so purpose always, purpose always, Always, can I get somebody to type in the comments? Always, purpose always originates with the creator, with the almighty. In fact, if you can type the whole thing, type it. Purpose always originates with the almighty, with the creator. There's no such thing as purpose that does not involve the conclusions of the designer. The maker of a thing reserves the legal right to define its purpose. And Miles Monroe so eloquently put it, he said, if you take a thing that was designed for one thing by its creator and you use it for another thing, it's called abuse, and abuse is abnormal use of a thing. When the creator designed the thing for this, and you tried to utilize the thing for that, that is abuse. It is abnormal use. So while we are searching the world to and fro, trying to locate purpose, Purpose always originates with the creator. And listen to what um, listen to what God says in Jeremiah 29 and 11. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. That it, these are my plans based on my purpose for you. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, Reads like this, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So these verses, um, these verses show us that God has a specific idea about why we exist. And God is the ultimate source of purpose clarity. These verses affirm that God has a specific plan and purpose for each of us, one that is inherently good and one that is designed to bring hope and fulfillment. Now, understanding this divine plan requires some of the things we're going to discuss, introspection and a willingness to align our lives with 
God's will. So this means that those of you that have chosen to live a life that does not recognize the creator, but yet you want to know what is your um, unique purpose for being, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, an exercise in futility. You got you to gotta be right. You got to get right with the creator before you get a revelation of your purpose. One of the most miserable ex existences in the human experience is to live a, live a lifetime knowing that you are created for something special, but never being able to put your finger on it because you ignored the creator. And you tried to manage your life based on the opinions and the assessments of everything and everybody else but the creator. And so you lived and you died having, never having really tapped into your purpose. Miles Monroe again said that the wealthiest place on the planet is the graveyard because in the graveyard are buried ideas and dreams and businesses and Man, that people never manifested. And most of this lack of manifestation is due to the fact we never prioritized the creator. Now, um, Parker Palmer wrote this. Check this out. This is powerful. Before I can tell my life, before I can tell my life what I want to do with it, I must listen to my life telling me who I am. And, and what is your life? In him we live, move, and have our being. Before I can tell my life, my external life, what I want to do with it, I must listen to my life telling me who I am. That's the God on the inside of you that will give you the revelation of your purpose when you prioritize him. But now, before I get into the, 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 the main, the meat of this particular lesson today on you know, discerning, locating, um, getting a revelation of, you know, uh, whatever we want to call it. I want to talk about common distractions that prevent many people from walking in their purpose. Common distractions. Um, because despite understanding the importance of having a purpose, many people struggle to stay on their path due to various distractions. And here are a few of them. Social expectations. Some of you can't locate your individual purpose because you're trying to fulfill all of these social expectations. You're trying to be what all of these people want you to be. Right? And you missing God. Pressure from society, pressure from family or peers can lead individuals to pursue paths that are not aligned with their true purpose. I think one of the great mistakes we make, even in our parenting, is to assume that because God used us to bring people into the world, that somehow that gives us a right to dictate how these people live their lives. You don't have, we don't have that, that right. I have four children, biological children. I don't try to, I don't try to impose my will upon their lives. That is, that is their life, right? I don't agree with a lot of it, but that's their life. I would choose to do something other than that, but I'm not on the inside of them. I don't know what, I don't know what makes them happy. I don't know what God is calling them to do. 
you know, I got my son that I always like to, to mention because he's named his name is Robert Charles Blakes III. And so, you know, people in church automatically say, oh, you're going to be a preacher like your, like your grandfather, like your daddy, like your uncle. Not necessarily. Now, I believe that there's a calling on his life, but I can't give you the particulars of what that looks like. God is kind of guiding this young man in his own way. And I'm kind of watching the hand of God steer him. And you know what I'm doing? I'm supporting him. I'm not putting pressure on him to be what I want him to be. I'm his father. I'm not his creator. Just like my father allowed me to figure it out for myself. My father never imposed ministry upon me, though I had his name. It was God that called me to ministry. I never wanted to be no preacher, never wanted to be no pastor. Come on now, I still think that there are things that I'm better suited for than preaching and pastoring. But it was God that called me against my will. This was never a desire or an ambition, but there was never pressure put on me. So many of us are missing God's plan because we're following the plans of our families, the, the plans of our friends. Galatians 1 and 10 says, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Now, the, the next thing that I listed as one of the things that distracts us from walking in or, dis, or you know, just really getting a revelation of authentic individual purpose is fear and doubt. Fear of failure, fear of the unknown, and self-doubt can paralyze progress towards one's purpose. And so when God begins to show you certain things or put certain pieces together, uh, fear cancels it. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know, how many of you have started getting some inclination about your purpose and it scared you? And so your fear kind of canceled that thought and you tabled that because, you know, that was just too much. You can't, you can't, you know, I can't see all of that. Well, if you can see it, it's probably not really the plan of God for you. Hmm. The plan of God is always scary. And then there's uh, materialism, the pursuit of material wealth and superficial success can distract us from a more meaningful purpose-driven endeavors. You know, when, 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 when you think like today we live in a time where people equate purpose with money, and so if, you know, if, if they're talking about purpose, the first thing they won't talk about is, well, how much, you know, how much money you're going to make, you know, but Purpose comes in to play long before money. Purpose ain't got nothing to do with no money. Purpose is something that you're so gifted to do and it so fulfills you that you would do it for nothing and then you wake up one day and realize that people pay you for it. Right? People pay you for it. Like, like I'm sitting here doing this right now. I love this. I do hours and hours and hours and hours of filming and hours and hours of lives and all of that. I don't get paid for that. No, 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 no. And, and people, you know, are the beneficiaries of it, but at least they think they are, but I'm really the greater beneficiary because this is the thing God created me to do. And God just creates ways for me to get paid to do it. But you don't, I don't ask nobody to give me nothing. If you look in Matthew 6, 24, it says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one or love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Many of you can't locate purpose because you're so locked in on money. And so every time God gives you an opportunity to walk in purpose, you want to know how much money am I going to make? And because there's no money on the table initially, 
You say, no, thank you, won't have any. When the reality is, when you walk in your purpose, God will take care of the money side. My father taught me an amazing lesson. That gentleman right there taught me an amazing lesson very early in ministry. He said, son, if you take care of God's business, he will take care of yours. There were never truer words spoken by a man. You love God, love God's people, and do everything you do for God with all your might, God will always take care of you. Uh, the, the, what is this? I, I listed social expectations, fear and doubt, materialism. These things are distractions from authentic individual purpose, procrastination, delaying action on important tasks, and goals can lead to stagnation and a lack of progress. God is telling you to make a move and you not understanding that making this move is going to lead to this and that's going to lead to that and that's going to lead to the next thing and then you're going to start getting clarity. But you procrastinating on this thing. So you never get out of the starting block because of procrastination. And the Bible says in Proverbs 6, 9 through 11, how long will you lie there, you sluggard? It's the Bible. Don't, don't get mad with me. I'm just reading the Bible. When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. And there's no greater poverty than the poverty of purpose or an impoverished sense of purpose when, when you, your purpose bank is empty because you have procrastinated and you've been too lazy to move on certain things. And then we have, um, I listed here, negative influences, negative influences. Surrounding oneself with negative or unsupportive people can drain motivation and clarity of purpose. You got to get all of these naysayers, all of these drama queens and drama kings out of your life because they are crossing up your signal. God is trying to give you clarity, but you got all of these negative people in your life and they're crossing up your signal. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. And then I listed here as a distraction to realizing authentic individual purpose, overcommitment, overcommitment. In other words, taking on too many responsibilities can leave little time and energy to focus on one's true purpose. You got too much going on. You got too much going on. You, you, God can't even introduce you to what's really meaningful because you've said yes to everything. And, and maybe you got some things you need to go to counseling for that keeps you locked in on stuff that it just keeps you overly busy, but being overly busy doesn't mean you're productive, and it certainly doesn't mean that you're purposeful. Most folk that's around here bragging about, I'm a multitask, I'm a multitask, how much of that stuff is really purposeful? Most of that stuff you're doing ain't even profitable. You just run you you find some sense of identity in saying, I'm a multitask. I'd rather you do one thing fully, completely, and properly at a time. Then to be around here bragging about you a multitask and you got 15 things partially done. Overcommitment is preventing you from realizing your full and authentic purpose, taking on too many responsibilities. And when I thought about this point, I had to go to go to Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Mary and Martha, those of you that are Bible readers, you know where I'm going with this. And it reads like this here. 
Now, it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, one thing is purposeful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, the purposeful thing, which shall not be taken away from her. So Martha tied up with all of these different things, obligating herself to all of this stuff, just busy, 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 busy. And she's mad because uh, Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet worshiping. So she says, Jesus, make her come in here and help me. Jesus says, no, you, you, you the one running around here like a chicken with your head cut off, doing all these things that ain't got no real purpose behind it. Leave Mary alone. Do what you're doing. Leave Mary alone. The one needful thing that Jesus said Mary has chosen is the only purposeful thing. How many things are you involved in right now that are truly purposeful? Some of y'all loaded down with stuff other folk gave you. God didn't even tell you to do that. Some of y'all doing stuff because, you know, it, 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 it subsidizes your low self-esteem. It makes you feel like somebody because you're doing it and people seeing you do it. And God ain't never told you to do that. And what you, what you don't realize is you have overloaded yourself to a point that God can't even put true purpose on your wagon. Now, let's get down to, I've taken a long time leading up to the main part of this lesson, practical keys to identifying and walking in individual purpose. Number one, first key is you must stay productive with your life. Stay productive with your life. The realization of purpose is like an old movie film on a reel. Remember those where you go to the movies and you, you hit a thing run, and when it ran out, you could see when it ran out, but the, you know, the movie was on a reel and the tape and all of that was on a reel and had to run through the projector. I don't know what they're doing up there now, but I remember those days. You could hear that thing moving up in that little window up, up on, on, on the back wall. Well, the, the, the thing about the movie film on the reel is you'll never see the movie until the reel is in motion. The reel got to start moving. And then you see the little thing flash on the screen. And you see back then you could see even the little color bars come on the screen. And then the movie would start playing. And as long as that thing was moving more and more and more of the movie slash purpose is revealed as you stay productive, as you continue to move forward with your life. Because here's a statement Holy Spirit gave me the other day. Sitting still, depressed about your purpose is not a path to finding purpose. Sitting still depressed about not having a purpose is no way to locate purpose. People that locate purpose stay productive. You got to stay productive. You got to be doing something. Everybody that Jesus called to be his disciple, they were busy doing something. Uh, wh who was it? Um, Matthew was a tax collector, am I right? Uh, Peter was out there fishing and all of this kind of thing. And, and, you know, just the list goes on. They were all busy doing something. You gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be in motion if you're going to be able to see purpose.
It's like the old movie reel. If it's not in motion, ain't nothing showing. Listen to what Ecclesiastes um, 9 and 10 says. Whatever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Live your life to the full. And if you live your life to the full as you engage in things that you're passionate about, that you're gifted to do, and things that serve others, God will give increasingly more clarity to your why. Why am I here? Well, we know, number one, you're here to do something. So start doing something. Find something you're passionate about. Find something you like. Find something you're gifted to do. Find something that's a blessing to others and just be doing something. And it's it's as you go, it's as you, as you're as you're doing, as you are active, as you are productive with your life, God reveals more and more and more and more and more. <clears throat> now, let's see. Number two, second key, is self-reflection and prayer. Well, you know, you got to pray. You got you to you gotta pray and you got to ask God. You got to ask God. Now, he's the creator, right? He's the manufacturer. So you got to ask him, why, 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 why do I exist? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Ask God. You go into all of these conferences and nothing wrong with that. I host conferences myself. I appreciate people for coming to my conferences, but even at my conferences, I try to make people understand that you got to go back to the creator for certain things. R.C. Blakes don't have the answer to what is your purpose. You got to ask God. And I love what James 1 and 5 says, if any, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally. And upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. If you need wisdom relative to your purpose, ask God. Ask God. Even if you go and get a prophetic word, you can't run off what somebody told you at church. You got to let God confirm that thing. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. Because you can jump out there based on what a man or a woman told you to do. But God is not obligated to be out there with you. You got to ask God, self-reflection and prayer, journaling, you know, regularly write about your thoughts, your experiences and feelings to gain deeper insights into your passions and your values. You got you to do some introspection. You got you to you talk to God. You got to ask God to reveal your heart to you. Show you some things about yourself. Lamentations 3 and 40 says, let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the Lord. So reflecting on our lives helps us to align our actions with God's will and to understand our true purpose. Usually, you know, this is just a hint. Usually the thing that has caused you great pain, your purpose is usually, usually it's somewhere around there. God usually repurposes the pain and he turns the pain into his glory. God takes your pain to create other folks healing and to bring glory to him. Usually, I promise you, the thing that you hate the most, the thing that has hurt you the most Usually there's some purpose in that thing. So this means that you have to engage in spiritual practices to seek, um, we call them spiritual disciplines, to seek divine guidance and clarity on your purpose. Seeking God's wisdom. Listen to a <clears throat> what Mother Teresa said. She said, prayer is not asking, prayer is putting one's self in the hands of God, 
at his disposition and listening to his voice in the depth of our hearts. You got to learn to ask God about your purpose and sincerely pray and wait on God. Sincerely pray and wait on God. Now, number three, seek feedback and mentorship. When you are in pursuit of your clarity relative to your individual purpose, you're going to have to seek feedback and mentorship. Find mentors who are living their purpose and can provide guidance, support, and accountability. Now, let me just let me just drop some wisdom for you here when it comes down to mentors. Um, mentors are not necessarily people that are going to go to lunch with you every week or sit on the phone with you for hours and all of that. Mentors are people that kind of open their lives and give you um, the green light to walk alongside them, to watch them, and to speak into your life from time to time. And the reason, you know, people think mentors are folk that just got time to just spend all day with you. No, that's not the case. Uh, the reason they qualify to be mentors is because they're living out their purpose. And so people that are living out their purpose are very, very busy. And so a lot of times there's going to be more caught than taught. And so, you know, you just, you got to learn to pay attention right now. I have my, one of my primary mentors is Apostle Ivy Hilliard, but he's mentored me for years through his books, through his tapes. My brother can tell you, I used to play that man's, when we was riding in the car, bringing him to school, cassette tapes. I'm playing Dr. Dr. Ivy Hilliard. He teaching faith. Now I get a chance to go sit down and have dinner with him regularly you know, but he can tell you, I didn't push up on him like that. Never needed to. I went to his conference, didn't even go go up to meet him. I sat in the back and I learned so much sitting in the back that it transformed how uh, we, we did church at our East New Orleans church. My whole staff was transformed by what I learned at his conference. Now I sit on the front row at his conferences. But he was my mentor long before. If I never got to a point where I walked closely, I would have still gotten what I needed to get. But you got, I just had to say that because so many folk misunderstand and you get offended with people that God will put in your life to be mentors because these people don't have time to just, you know, drink coffee with you every day. Bay, you can, you can you, if you have the right heart, you can catch what you need. And the Bible puts it this way in Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Now, here's, here's a great biblical example of the power of uh, a mentor and a mentee in terms of fine-tuning purpose. And it's Eli and Samuel. And in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, reads like this, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision, and it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down, and the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. 
And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak, for thy servant heareth. So you see the power of the instruction of a mentor in terms of fine-tuning one's authentic divine purpose. Wise mentors can help us stay true to our purpose and provide valuable insights and encouragement. Uh, Proverbs 20, 18, every purpose is, is established by counsel and with good advice make war. So you got to surround yourself with a supportive community as well that encourages your growth and purpose-driven journey. Don't sit up in a church that doesn't encourage your growth and the development of your purpose because, you know, you grew up there and all this kind of stuff. You got to be around people that it's cool to try to stay connected to people that are part of your history, but more importantly, you got to be surrounded by people that are supporting your destiny and your future. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, purpose in other words, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So a community of faith can help to reinforce our commitment to our divine purpose and even help us to realize it. Now, number uh, four, I only have six. Number four uh, is the fourth key is continuous learning and growth. A growth mindset, a growth mindset is mandatory in discerning purpose. You can't have a fixed mindset and walk in purpose. Growth mindset is a mindset that says it didn't work today, it'll work tomorrow. Uh, a fixed mindset says, oh, it didn't work today, so it'll never work. That's the kind of mindset you have. You will never, you will never discern God's purpose for your life. Purpose is discerned by way of a growth mindset. I love how Joshua 1 and 8 puts it, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. As you what? Intake this word, meditate on it, and maintain a growth mindset. Because purpose is always advancing. You must align with it, and then you got to stay in sync with it. You can't get stuck. You got to maintain a growth mindset if you're going to have a continuous revelation of purpose, which we need, because purpose is always advancing. So this means practically, this means things like, you know, you got to pursue um, educational opportunities that enhance your skills and your knowledge related to your purpose, you know, we ought to see you in school, learning more. Proverbs 4 and 7 says, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom, though it costs all you have, get understanding. Invest in education and invest in personal growth. It will ensure that you are well equipped to fulfill your purpose. You know, like I have amazing online programs that cost that I know will help people, but people would rather sit with the free content. When I've sat for hours and spent money to create these programs, most folk don't want to invest in themselves. They'd rather go and buy a concert ticket than invest in something that's going to break that stronghold or give them the revelation they need to move to the next level. But you got to also engage in activities that foster personal growth, such as reading, attending workshops and seeking new experiences. Growth in knowledge will empower you to realize purpose easier. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi says, live as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. Now, number five, 
fifth key that, that I've listed here that speaks to um, discerning purpose is serving others. Serving, serving others. Engage in, you know, volunteer activities that align with your passions and your values. Listen to what Matthew 25, 40 says. The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Serving others is a direct catalyst to create manifestation in your life of living out one's purpose and reflecting the love of Christ. Um, Galatians 6 and 9 says, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And a part of that harvest is the realization of your why. When you help others, God will empower you. Um, let's see, number six, and finally, the sixth key is health and well-being. If you want to realize your purpose, you got to maintain a healthy lifestyle to ensure you have the energy and the vitality to pursue your purpose. Because your purpose is revealed in stages, and too many of us die before our time because we disrespected our bodies. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Caring for our physical health honors God and enables us to more effectively fulfill our purpose. And when we have honored our bodies, God will give us a greater revelation of what's in front of us. But if you don't have a body, a temple that will carry you there, why would God give you revelation of it? And then also under this note, we got to practice being present, you know, seeking, um, you know, peace, being present, losing the anxiety, health and well-being. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every, every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So there you have it. There you have it. There are some keys to discerning your individual purpose and walking in it. Now, I may go back into this subject matter because it is inexhaustible. But my prayer is that this has ministered to you and that this has helped you in a special way today. Now, as I get ready to leave you today, I want to say to you, you're on top and you're going higher. God has more in store for you. I pray that you've been blessed. Don't forget to stop by the website, rcblakes.com, and look at all of those online programs that I mentioned. They will be a blessing to you. Till next time, I'm your pastor, R.C. Blake, saying to you, see you at the top. God bless. Love you.